poet composed several lines of poetry which even today are words that will be familiar to many of us. They've been going around in my head for the last couple of days. For everything there is a season and a time for everything under heaven. <coughs> and this is a time for celebration. A celebration marking David's 30 years of service to our country. And so, let us pray. Almighty God, we gather today to celebrate David's retirement. We are thankful for the opportunities that David has had, and even more for the ways in which he has transformed those opportunities into valuable service for our nation. <coughs> As we look back to the past, and as we look ahead to the future, send your blessing upon David, and upon this gathering of family, friends, and fellow soldiers. Make this moment truly one of celebration. And as you bless us tonight, let your special blessing be upon all of those who devote their lives to the service of our country. Those who agree say, Amen. Amen. On behalf of today's host, Brigadier General John E. O'Neill, the 52nd Quartermaster General, welcome to the retirement ceremony in honor of Chief Warrant Officer 5, David J. Longstaff, as he concludes a distinguished career of 30 years of service to the United States Army. We would like to extend a special welcome to Major General Phillips, Command Sergeant Major Terry Parham, Chief Warrant Officer 5 Johnson, Command Sergeant Major, Regimental Command Sergeant Major Craig, Mr. Jones, for their attendance in today's ceremony. Today's music is being provided by the 392nd Army Band, City Point Brass, under the direction of Staff Sergeant Christina Collage. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, Brigadier General Johnny e. O'Neill. <laughs> wow, 30 years of service in the greatest army of all. Dave's going to share some of those special moments, some of those missions, the places, the faces, the relationships with whom he shared that journey. And that's what we want to hear from, from Chief Longstaff. 30 years probably went through, I'm guessing, eight or nine different types of uh, utility uniforms. Sure. <laughs> they started with the olive, olive drab green, We've gone to the battle dress uniform, the red stock battle dress, the chocolate chip, <laughs> many different patterns. And the consistency throughout all of that was he had U.S. Army over his heart for 30 years everything that he had proved to be a, an absolutely phenomenal leader, reaching the pinnacle of his profession. You see his bio in the, in the program, and you can see that he has served wherever the nation has asked him to serve, various places overseas and in the continental United States, in some very dark, distant, and dangerous places, literally at Freedom's Frontier, where he was called forward to action as the ultimate symbol of American resolve and commitment that is the United States Army soldier. With old glory on his right shoulder, defending freedom and democracy, removing the yoke of tyranny and oppression from those less fortunate, Dave answered that call repeatedly. And he led expert. As a non-commissioned officer, as a chief warrant officer. This is the greatest army in the history of modern warfare. It's the best led, manned, equipped, trained, 
land power on the planet. David helped build that army in his 30 year career. And the strength of that army is in his non commissioned officer corps. What we call the backbone of the army. And CEOs have the toughest job because they have to turn orders into action and lead the troops to mission accomplishment. They did that all the way up to just about Sergeant First Class, <coughs> selected for promotion to Sergeant First Class, he said. And I'm sure he'll share the story of, well, that's a pretty darn successful career right there, he went over away. And then a uh, flanking movement, and he changed, I don't know, over to the dark side? Share some of that. <coughs> but what an incredible personality, what a great leader, He's taken on every challenge and just excelled. He lights up a room. He personally has a calming influence on me. <laughs> We've been working a lot of challenging issues in the Joint Culinary Center of Excellence in the last 18 months. And I exhale. Feel completely at ease when Chief Longstaff is in the room. Look at that smile. <laughs> what is there to be upset about, sir? We got this. And it's a beaming smile, and the cheeks pop out, and the eyes get big, and those arching eyebrows. Right? 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 can possibly measure up to how we truly feel and the respect and admiration we all have for you as a leader, as an army professional, as a great human being. Well, thanks for who you are and what you've done and what you've meant to our army over many, many years in the best. Come on up here, man. At this time, Chief Longstaff will be presented with the Legion of Merit Medal. Please remain seated for the presentation of this award, other accolades, and other recognitions. The certificate reads, the United States of America, to all who shall see these presents, greeting. This is to certify that the President of the United States, authorized by Act of Congress, 20 July 1942, has awarded the Legion of Merit to Chief Warrant Officer 5, David J. Longstaff, United States Army, for exceptionally meritorious service while serving in numerous positions of greater responsibility, culminating his 30 years of military service as the Army Food Advisor for the Joint Culinary Center of Excellence 266 for Massive Battalion, Fort Lee, Virginia. Throughout his career, Chief Warrant Officer 5 Longstaff demonstrated an unfailing dedication to soldiers unsurpassed professionalism, total mission accomplishment, and infinite technical and tactical competence. Chief Warrant Officer 5 Longstaff's superior contributions and exemplary performance of military service are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon him, the 23rd Quartermaster Brigade, the United States Army Quartermaster School, the Combined Arms Support Command, and the United States Army. By order of the Secretary of the Army, with an effective date of 27 January 2014, signed Larry D. Wise, Major General, U.S. Army Commander. Chief Longstaff is now being presented with a personal letter from our Commander in Chief. The letter reads Dear Chief Warrant Officer 5 Longstaff, I extend the sincere thanks of a grateful nation 
for your many years of exemplary service in the United States Army. Your patriotic devotion to duty in times of peace and war is inspiring, and it speaks volumes about your commitment to serving our country. In your career, you have looked beyond your own comfort and safety to protect the lives and way of life of those you may never meet. That exceptional spirit of sacrifice is the march of the men and women of the armed forces and their families. Your courage and selflessness are values each American can look to as we work to keep this nation's dreams alive for future generations. As you celebrate this milestone, take pride in the accomplishment and contributions you have made as part of the greatest fighting force the world has ever known. Michelle and I send you our warmest wishes for a rewarding retirement and wish you the best of luck as you embark on the next stage in your life. Sincerely, Barack Obama, Commander-in-Chief. President of the United States. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Chief Longstaff is now being presented a certificate of appreciation from the governor of Florida. The certificate reads, Dear Chief Warrant Officer 5 Longstaff, congratulations. It is a pleasure to send my best wishes to you on your retirement after 30 years of honorable and dedicated service to the United States Army. Your record, conduct, and devotion to duty reflect your allegiance to the high standards of the military profession. The leadership and integrity you demonstrated in each of your challenging assignments in defense of your state and country are greatly appreciated. May you continue to find challenge and reward in the years ahead. Sincerely, Rick Scott, Governor of Florida. Chief Longstaff is now being presented his Certificate of Retirement from the United States Army. <laughs> the certificate reads, to all who shall see these presents, greetings. This is to certify that Chief Warrant Officer 5, David J. Longstaff, Having served faithfully and honorably, is retired from the United States Army with an effective date of 1 June 2014. Signed, General Raymond T. Odierno, General, Chief of Staff, United States Army. with the flag of the United States in honor of his retirement. I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is all glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over great institutes of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see me. I stand for peace honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little bit higher, my collars a little bit truer. I bow to no one. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshiped. I am saluted. I am respected. I am revered. I am loved, and I am feared. I have fought every battle of every war more for more than 200 years. But my finest hour comes when I am torn into stripes to be used as bandages for my wounded comrades on the field of battle when I fly at half-mast to honor my soldiers. When I lie in the trembling arms of a grieving mother at the graveside of her fallen son or daughter, and when I am lowered for that final retreat and receive that final salute of a retiring soldier. I am proud. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wait. Long may I wait.
At this time, we asked that Chief Longstaff's wife, Ms. Ginger Longstaff, to join her husband on stage. Ms. Ginger Longstaff will now be presented with the Catherine Green Award from the United States Army Quartermaster School. The certificate reads, to all quartermasters, whatever ye may be, greetings. Know ye that there appear before the most artists and selective committee of proven quartermasters, a likely candidate for the Catherine Green Award. Be it remembered, that the here and after mentioned individual has been inspected and passed on by ourselves and our loyal staff. And be it known by all ye quartermasters and spouses who may be honored by this individual's presence that Mrs. Ginger Longstaff has been faithful to the quartermaster corps. Be it further understood that we hereby confer upon this individual the shield of Catherine Green and Blasen Bob and enjoin all quartermasters henceforth to show due honor and respect whenever this individual may enter the remiss. Given under our hand, this 31st day of January, signed John E. Oni, Brigadier General, U.S. Army Commandant. being presented with a Certificate of Appreciation from the United States Army. The certificate reads, to all who shall see this presence, reading, this is to certify that Ms. Ginger Longstaff, on the occasion of the retirement of her husband from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for her own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service, her unfailing support and understanding help to make possible her husband's lasting contributions to the nation. Signed, General Raymond T. Oliero, Chief of Staff, United States Army. It is my distinct honor to introduce Chief Warrant Officer 5, retired David Taylor. And the other thing is, I guarantee I'm going to, I'm going to leave out some folks. I guarantee it. It's 
just the way it is. Um, I've been working on speeches and I haven't slept for about six months. It feels <laughs> like uh, as this thing, the process has been going on and on and on and, and the transition back and forth. So I apologize right up front for who I miss because um, I guarantee I'll miss someone. But uh, I do something I almost never do. I have a few talking points. Uh, I try not to go over there too often. So the first thing um, is to say thank you, sir. Um, you know, they have a post-retirement ceremony, um, which is awesome. And, uh, and I asked for, because of the Army 45 position, and, and just for 30 years, I asked to, if we could do a separate ceremony. Um, mine is, there's no way, when we looked at the venue for the post-retirement, that I could fit the family in. I think that would be impossible. Um, so, so we asked to do a different venue, and I know it's not easy. You know, I had to come back from another event on the road, on the fly, probably changing the car or something. Um, <laughs> 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 exactly. So, uh, so for that, I, I really appreciate it. Car major, it's, it's just a pleasure, and I really appreciate it. Uh, you being up here and going through this, this uh, with me, for sure. Um, all of our VIPs, Sergeant Phillips, uh, Sergeant Major, um, I was telling them, Sergeant Major uh, Perrin, Earlier, that earlier this week I was in a just out processing finance, and a, a young soldier comes up to me, as they often do, to talk to me about being a foreign officer. Uh, the guy didn't know me; he wasn't a cook. I had no idea, but um, maybe it's because I didn't look like I was going to bite his head off. Uh, he wasn't talking about foreign officer, so we just chat, and he said, "Like you know, the sergeant major, the sergeant major's coming in, and we got to, to chat about it." And, uh, and I said, "Sergeant major, foreign?" He said, "Yeah." I said, so I came back. And I Oh, Lisa protocol. I said, you got to send him an invite. She said, you can't send customs for a major. An invite with five days left. That's just not right. I said, you got to understand. I said, this guy, there's only about three people that knew me when I was a young sergeant. And he's one. Um, he was an advanced culinary skills instructor for me uh, with a guy named Steve Whitworth. And, uh, when I was a young staff sergeant. And, uh, and so I, there's no way I wouldn't have you here. So I appreciate it, Sergeant Major. Uh, and, 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 and to be honest with you, it does mean it's just so proud uh, to see you come here and be where you're at today. That's just awesome. Uh, Chief Johnson, thank you. I, I truly appreciate you coming here. I, you know, it's kind of fine. Um, I, I got stopped by a staff sergeant the other day, and he says to me, he says, you know, Chief, you're like the third W5 I've ever seen. <laughs> and, and so in this room alone, there are so many W-5s, retired and active, uh, that he would be beside himself here. So for that, I say thank you as well. I'm um, just representing the Warren Officer Corps and, uh, and having the, the true representation of the W-5s and the senior Warren Officer community. It's amazing. Uh, it's hard to get around here sometimes without seeing the W-5. And when you get out to the real army, you forget sometimes that, that people just don't see W5s and, and command star majors, star majors every other time they turn around. So it's a pretty darn special thing. Uh, and I love the fact that, that everyone here can be a part of it. Um, I told you I had to look at this. To our food service professionals here, seniors. Um, I won't talk about this at dinner a little bit. I don't know how many food service W5s we have here right now, retired and active, but it is a handful. Uh, in, the, in a group that doesn't have that many to start with, I think there's 10 of us right now, 11 of us in the Army, period. Uh, and I bet we have six of them in the room, five of them in the room. Uh, and then just some of my mentors. Um, Chief Simmons, uh, Chief Moore, uh, uh, Mr. Tolbert. Mr. Tolbert, uh, you know, gave me some tough love when I was a young one officer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I came back from the sign I, I, and he called me at my house to tell me I wasn't going to get a top block. And I did, <laughs> he was tough love. <laughs> but you know, it was honest. It was, it was exactly what one officers are all about, and it was incredible. Uh, and so I appreciate that. Uh, I don't know. Galloway is in the room, um, and 
Rufus Montgomery. Uh, Rufus Montgomery was my branch manager when I was, when I assessed and became a one officer. Uh, and he sat right in the back of what was Mifflin Hall then and told me that uh, there was no way he wasn't going to send me to Fort Stella, Oklahoma. Even though I was going to be the only one officer on post. Uh, the whole mentorship thing was going to be kind of tough, but that's okay. Uh, and then obviously, uh, Chief Matrensic as the, uh, the Army Food Advisor and just a constant mentorship. Um, I tell people all the time, I, this is way off script, but uh, <laughs> you know, when I went to Fort Sill and there are no one officers, they said find a mentor. Uh, and, and it's the reason that Sergeant Major is so important that you're here and, and the, obviously you Sergeant Major is. Uh, you know, my mentors were NCOs. It's just the way it was. I had two master sergeants and uh, I was a W1 and they didn't let me get in any trouble that I didn't deserve to get into. <laughs> so, they would make sure I would fail just enough to learn a lesson. Uh, they would give me a cautionary note that I probably wouldn't listen to, and then they would rub it in my face just a little bit to tell me, tell me it was going to be okay, but they never once let me fail out there, and they taught me so many things, and for that I tell young one officers all the time, uh, it's great to have one officer mentors, but uh, find yourself a master sergeant, a sergeant major, You'll never go wrong. I promise you that. Uh, I've got some great friends in the crowd too. Sergeant Major Turcotte uh, and Sergeant Major Ryan, retired one of the teeth in the room or not. But, um, it's awesome to find those type of mentors. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for uh, all of your attendance and, and being able to support this with me. Uh, so now my family. Uh, you know what? Uh, the general and I talked about it the other day. My family comes, they, for 30 years, they, they have been an incredible supporter of the career. It doesn't matter uh, if, if they can get where I'm at, if it's a promotion or if it's uh, anything that has to, to do with, uh, with, with my career, they've been a part of it. And it is incredible. And I can't thank you enough for coming in all the way back 18 here uh, right now. And that is just awesome. And I thank you so much. For everything, for every time you come in for uh, for a promotion, every time you come in for a deployment, anything, uh, it's just been incredible. Um, you don't know what that means. Uh, the general said it to Ginger, I think, a little bit. Part of the Army family is the Army family and extending and showing showing to everybody what that means. You have a strong, supportive family that supports what you do for a living. Um, and it's not easy. It's not easy when you're out there you have a lot of time on airplanes and going to countries. So, so that's tough. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, before I talk about my media, uh, there's two more. Just they have support me the whole time, and I, I'm going to talk about them. We're, kinda, we're hoping to look past this because we uh, we had a couple rounds that couldn't couldn't make it in, um, but they have been supporters. Uh, Ginger's dad, George, uh, is a former Navy guy, and uh, just an incredible supporter of the military. General Mayhem or Sergeant Major <coughs> screw up. That's a great anecdote or something, and, and uh, you just can't imagine how important that is to me. Uh, for my sons, um, it's very, being a military kid is hard, uh, especially when you got a nobody like me at the helm. Uh, and so it's tough. Uh, and you've never once complained. You know, there's a huge difference between. Sacrifice and you know maturity, gaining maturity by you know travel all over the world. Uh, and you kids were just amazing. Uh, you know we moved all over, and I think you got a school. Uh, I'm kind of all uh, points, but I never missed a beat. So thank you, thank you for that. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, for my life, for Ginger, I'm gonna tell you. People say it all the time. I've been to a hundred of these things. 
chance that I would be standing here today without you. Zero. Uh, it, it has absolutely driven me uh, to the successful career that I have. With that support, there's just no way I can fail. Uh, so thank you. Uh, okay, now there's a few comments. But Years, I, you know, I, I got a few minutes. <laughs> Cocktails don't start for about 25 minutes. So, um, so uh, 1984. For those of you who remember it, because there's probably some in here that may not. Uh, like a virgin. Number one record uh, on radio. Paid about a buck ten for gas. Uh, Raven just had a second term. First of each was a Super Bowl commercial. Uh, and on the 20th, on the 18th of May, 1984, uh, I put on a uniform for the very first time. Uh, and that was an incredible life-changing event for me. Um, when I came in the Army, sir, uh, folks weren't very popular. Uh, it was not necessarily the best MOS to be a part of. Uh, actually, the recruiter tried to get me not to be a cook. He thought it was ridiculous. Uh, you know, we are often treated secondary. We are headed to commander almost always. And so it's been fun to watch the evolution of food service for the last 30 years uh, as, as we've progressed now to foreign chef coats, we're certified, for executive chefs. Uh, we've got the ACF guys back there. Uh, and, and we are truly uh, a force now in the Army structure. Part of that. Part of that's because we enforce that now. We make sure that our folks and our, our logisticians are part of the Army family. And that's huge. And we didn't have that when I came in. Uh, so, it's been a great career. I, I wrote, I love every minute of it. I love almost every minute of it. <laughs> Chief Longstaff here on stage, and please bring your programs. 